This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. If he reveals himself through his promises, then his promises are part of the way that he fulfills his purpose. One of the greatest joys that we have here on earth as Christians is knowing that God has a purpose and a will for each of us. Certainly as a group, he has a will and a purpose for our life. But what about us individually? Yes, God has a purpose and a will for us individually. He created us in the, as individuals because he has something that he wants to accomplish through us individually. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.9, he has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. In other words, God has a purpose and a will for your life, not because you're indispensable, but because he wants to do something special through you. Why does he want to do something special through you as an individual? Well, look at Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. God made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you've been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Look at this. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. There's what God is up to. To show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us through Christ Jesus. Romans 9 verses 23 and 24 says it this way. What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy? I love that. Whom he prepared in advance for glory. Even us whom he also called not only from the Jews but also from the Gentiles. That covers you. That covers you. In other words, God's purpose, what God is up to in your life, is to make the riches of His glory known to the objects of His mercy. You are a glory giver to God's objects of mercy. That's what God is up to in your life, to display His glory to the objects of His mercy. God's will is revealed and supported through his promises. And so it's important to know how do we apply those promises then? If God reveals his promises to us, how do we apply those promises that he gives to us that are so important to him and so important for us to know? There's a little thing that I call the promise plus principle. I would copyright it and coin it, but I'm not that smart. Besides, it's God's idea anyway. The promise plus principle is this idea that every promise that God gives comes with its own unique set of benefits. And each benefit is also a discovery of how to discover and apply the promise. Every promise that God gives has its own unique set of benefits. So let's take a look at, at some of these. There are, uh, there are basically four uh, four things that we need to understand about the promise plus principle or about promises in general. And the first is that God's promises are always delivered in his presence. God's promises are always delivered in his presence. You see, Abraham lived his life when he was living really under uh, by choice and when he, was, when he was really seeking God's will. What he was doing was living in the presence of God. When God spoke to him, he listened, he heard, he understood when God spoke to him. Genesis 22 says, and, and for example, in verse 1, it says, Sometime later God tested Abraham, and he said to Abraham, and Abraham replies, Here I am. Now how could he say, Here I am, if he wasn't listening? He was living in the presence of God. He was actively listening for God to speak and direct. Verses 11 and 12, after he, when he was about ready to, to, uh, to slay his son, the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, and he replies, here I am. Now even in that traumatic moment where he was doing what he thought God wanted him to do, which God was just basically trying him, even at that moment, I would have been so focused on the horror of what was going through and how I was going to have to explain this and live with this for the rest of my life. It would have been very, very difficult to be listening to God at that moment in my life. 
But Abraham was listening. And when God spoke to him, he answered, oh, here I am. And he was given that reprieve, if you will. God's promises are always delivered in his presence. We need to be living in his presence. And that means that there needs to be this sense that we are right where God wants us to be. Not just the sense, but the truth of the fact that we're where God wants us to be. God's promises are always delivered through Christ Jesus. In fact, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, no matter how many promises God has made, they're always yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken to us by the glory of God. Now, this is critical to understand. According to this verse, all of God's promises to you are in Christ and through him. That means that to enjoy the benefit of God's promises, you have to have a right relationship and fellowship with Jesus Christ. He is your source and the method of God's delivery of each of his promises.